Narsimhan, Chief Minister of Telangana, Shri K. Chandrasekhar Rao, Srimati Sushma Swaraj, Honorable Minister for External Affairs, and our Raksha Mantri, Minister of Defense, Srimati Nirmala Sitaraman. Ladies and gentlemen, for centuries, India was the global hub for art, mathematics, metallurgy, astronomy, and biotechnology, leading to discoveries so profound that they are relevant even today. This ancient legacy of innovation is now resurgent and is being further augmented by the ambitions and entrepreneurial energy of 1.3 billion empowered citizens with a love for free enterprise, technology, unmatched skills, and an almost spiritual devotion to industriousness. This unique balance of ancient instincts and changing demographics is what makes India the perfect partner for doing business. Welcome to a land renowned for its immense knowledge, innovation, wisdom, and enterprise. Welcome to a land of great opportunities. Welcome to India. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 8th edition of the Entrepreneurship Summit. In this GES, we are highlighting four sectors, health and life sciences, energy and infrastructure, financial technology, media and entertainment. Ladies and gentlemen, GES 2017 was preceded by numerous Road to GES events across the world. And here's a glimpse. Since 2010, the Global Entrepreneurship Summit has traveled across the world. In its eighth year, the GES comes to India, making it the first hosting nation in South Asia. This is going to be a melting pot of cultures, a confluence point for investors, for entrepreneurs. India is a proud host to GES 2017 with the theme, Women First, Prosperity for All. This year's Global Entrepreneurship Summit, co-sponsored by the United States, has representatives of 148 countries and over 1,800 entrepreneurs from around the world in a country that truly believes in the power of entrepreneurship. India is one of the fastest growing economies in the world and its government has fostered an environment where entrepreneurship thrives. When I say Startup India, I am going to say Stand Up India. If I give five people a day, then my startup will grow in my country. 
Leading up to the GES, Niti Aayog organized over 50 events in different cities of India, partnering with industry bodies, foundations, educational institutions, and corporates. The US government, too, carried out similar events across the world, fostering the spirit of entrepreneurship. Multiple pitching competitions, panel discussions, and citizen engagements were held to promote collaboration and problem solving. Winners from these competitions were given golden tickets to participate in the prestigious summit as delegates. By connecting the best entrepreneurship minds with investors and startups across the globe, we look forward to setting the agenda for prosperity, cutting across nations and communities at the Global Entrepreneurship Summit 2017. Ladies and gentlemen, we extend a very warm welcome to all the delegates of the Global Entrepreneurship Summit 2017. The journey of every entrepreneur begins with the dream, unshackling the mind and the spirit with a belief that something more is possible. A belief that gives birth to a million ideas. But it takes just one innovation, one inspiration. An instinct that says, instinct that says, this is it. An idea comes to life and an entrepreneur is born.
There's no business like show business.
May we now request the Chief Minister of Telangana, Shri K. Chandrasekhar Rao, to deliver the welcome address. Honorable Prime Minister, C. Narendra Modi ji, Honorable External Affairs Minister, Srimati Sushma Swaraj ji, Honorable Defence Minister, Srimati Nirmala Sitaraman ji, Srimati Ivanka Trump, Advisor to the President of the United States of America, Distinguished Dignitaries, Participants and Guests. I am very happy to personally welcome you to our state of Telangana and to the historic city of Hyderabad. We feel very proud to be hosting one of the most prestigious global events. Hyderabad, a most happening city with vibrant economic activity, is recognized all over the world as a welcoming and most hospitable destination. I am sure that you will experience the Hyderabadi character during the stay here. Telangana is the newest and youngest state of our country under the <clears throat> industrial policy promotion which is called TSI pass. It is now mandatory by law that all approvals have to be given within 15 days. The unique feature of this policy is that in case the approval does not come in 15 days, it is deemed to be given. I would like to inform that this policy has actually worked quite admirably on the ground. In the last three years, we have given approvals to 5,469 industries, industrial units with a total investment of $17.5 billion and created over 400,000 jobs. All this achievement has happened without the investors recruiting requiring to run from pillar to post. Telangana has been ranked as number one state in the country in ease of doing business rankings brought out by the Government of India and the World Bank jointly. Telangana has now become a favoured destination for both international and domestic investors and you will be pleased to know that Hyderabad has the second largest presence of five most valuable companies in the world outside their own headquarters in the USA. These include Apple, Google, Microsoft, Facebook, and Amazon. We are also encouraging young entrepreneurs. I am happy to mention that Hyderabad hosts India's largest technology incubator called T Hub. We have a vibrant startup ecosystem in which the government has played a catalytic role in bringing together the best academic institutions and the corporate sector to nourish and support the brilliant young minds. THUB is now recognized as a role model by the National Institute of Transforming India, popularly known as Niti Ayo. I am delighted that we have got such an important platform to showcase our investor-friendly environment. At the same time, we are also keen to learn from the innovative work being done by others all over the world. I trust that the deliberations over the next two days in the Global Entrepreneurship Summit will enrich us with new ideas and plans. I once again welcome all of you to our state of Telangana and hope that you would enjoy the legendary hospitality of Hyderabad and relish its signature dish, Hyderabadi Biryani. Thank you. Jai Hind. Thank you, Honorable Chief Minister. Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to introduce you to Mitra, an indigenous robot developed by a young startup from Bengaluru.
May we now request the Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi and Ms. Ivanka Trump to initiate the logo launch for the Global Entrepreneurship Summit 2017. We request the Prime Minister to kindly press the Indian flag button welcome on the screen. Welcome, Van. Welcome, Ms. Van. Welcome, Sri Narendra Modi. May we now request Ms. Ivanka Trump to kindly press the U.S. flag button on the screen. request Ms. Ivanka Trump, advisor to the President of the United States of America, to kindly address the gathering. Hello, everyone. Thank you for all being here and for the incredibly warm welcome. On behalf of the United States and the 150 other countries represented in this room, thank you for hosting the Global Entrepreneurship Summit here in Hyderabad, a city that is quickly emerging as the innovation hub of India. And thank you, Prime Minister Modi, for joining us here today and that for all that you are doing to build India as a thriving economy, a beacon of democracy, and a symbol of hope to the world. What you are achieving here is truly extraordinary. From your childhood selling tea to your election as India's Prime Minister, you've proven that transformational change is possible. And now you are bringing that promise to hundreds of millions of people across your country. Thank you. To the people of India, I want to congratulate you as you celebrate the 70th anniversary of your independence. You are celebrating it as the world's largest democracies and one of the fastest growing economies on earth.
Through your own enterprise, entrepreneurship, and hard work, the people of India have lifted more than 130 million citizens out of poverty. A remarkable improvement, and one I know will only continue to grow under the leadership of Prime Minister Modi. All of you are helping India's middle class reach its goal of nearly 500 million people by 2030. You have opened new universities across the country. Your doctors and scientists are discovering medical cures and life-saving technologies. Your engineers and your architects have built modern wonders that grace your skies. And Indian spacecraft have traveled to the moon and to Mars. The people of India inspire us all. This is the first time India has hosted the Global Entrepreneurship Summit. It is a symbol of the strength and friendship between our two people and the growing economic and security partnership between our two nations. As President Trump said earlier this year, India has a true friend in the White House. I would like to thank the State Department for co-hosting this incredible gathering. I would also like to thank Governor Narasimhan and all elected Indian officials who are here with us tonight for welcoming us to your beautiful country. Thank you. It's incredible to be in this ancient city brimming with transformative technology. Now, your tech centers may, may, even outshine your world-famous biryani. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> CEOs like Microsoft Satya Nadella went to school right here in Hyderabad. <laughs> Just a few kilometers away, T-Hub's brand new facility is set to open next year and will become the largest incubator in Asia. In this city of pearls, the greatest treasure is you. The dreamers, the innovators, entrepreneurs, and leaders who never give up, never abandon your aspirations, and always strive for a better tomorrow. Today, we come together to celebrate what is happening here in India, what is happening in the United States and all over the world, Entrepreneurs are revolutionizing our economies and improving our societies. You are rewriting the rules. You have the inspiration and drive to serve our communities through the projects you start and the businesses you build. You have the grit, the perseverance, and the will to succeed. Each of you started with an idea. You've worked long days and nights to code the next robot, create the next app, find the next cure, and discover the next breakthrough to improve the lives of millions of people. Some may have tried to convince you that the risks are too great, the rewards too small, but you are here today because you are not afraid to fail. You want to own your future. So I want to congratulate you on all that you have already accomplished. And I especially want to congratulate the women entrepreneurs here with us today. Thank you. This year's summit is focused on a theme that is key to our future. Women first, prosperity for all. I'm proud to say that for the first time ever, women make up the majority of the 1,500 entrepreneurs selected to attend this summit. I see all of you out there. <laughs> Only when women are empowered to thrive will our families, our economies, and our societies reach their fullest potential. As a former entrepreneur, employer, and executive in a male-dominated industry, I've seen firsthand that all too often, women must do more than their male counterparts to prove themselves at work, while also disproportionately
caring for their families at home. After my father's election, I saw an opportunity to leave my businesses for the privilege of serving our country and empowering all Americans to succeed. Our administration is advancing policies that enable women to pursue their careers and care for their families, policies that improve workforce development and skills training, and policies that lift government barriers and fuel entrepreneurship so that Americans can turn their dreams into their incredible legacies. In the last decade, women have made remarkable strides in starting new businesses. Globally, between 2014 and 2016, entrepreneurship activity amongst women has increased by 10%. In the United States, within the last decade, the number of women-owned firms has grown by 45%. Even more promising, minority women have started nearly 8 in 10 new woman-owned businesses. Today, more than 11 million women in the United States own businesses. They employ nearly 9 million workers and generate over a trillion dollars in revenue. Many women become entrepreneurs and job creators out of necessity. Some weren't given the flexibility they needed at work to care for their families. Others lacked professional sponsors or weren't given a fair shot at a promotion. Instead, women, like the many here today, are charting their own courses and achieving incredible feats. <coughs> Fueling the growth of women-led businesses isn't simply good for society, it's good for our economy. One study estimates that closing the gender entrepreneurship gap worldwide could grow our global GDP by as much as 2%. The women in this room can lead the way in closing that gap and ushering in a new era of greater prosperity. Yet despite the soaring rate of female entrepreneurs, women still face steep obstacles to starting, owning, and growing their businesses. We must ensure women entrepreneurs have access to capital, access to networks and mentors, and access to equitable laws. In developing countries, 70% of women-owned small and medium-sized businesses are denied access to capital. The result has been a nearly $300 billion annual credit deficit for women entrepreneurs in the developing world. In the United States, a Harvard Business Review report found that investors asked men questions about their potential for gains, whereas they asked women questions about their potential for loss. This could in part explain why women entrepreneurs received less than 3% of venture capital funding in 2016. We are working hard to reverse this trend. The U.S. Small Business Administration, for example, increased lending to women by over $500 million this year alone. When it comes to networks and mentorship, Roughly half of women in the United States say they have difficulty finding a mentor. Yet mentorship is critical to success, as each of you knows. Entrepreneurs need professional guidance to help them start and grow their business. In the United States, we are fostering mentorship through programs such as SCORE, a nationwide initiative where successful men and women coach those who want to become their own CEOs. And when it comes to equitable laws, while many developed and developing countries have made tremendous strides, there is still much work to be done. In some countries, women are not allowed to own property, travel freely, or work without the consent of their husbands. In even more countries, the cultural and family pressure is so great that women do not feel the freedom to work outside of the home. Our administration is striving to promote greater opportunity for women around the world both through our domestic reforms and our international initiatives. This summer at the G20 conference, the United States was a founding member of a bold new initiative with the World Bank, the Women Entrepreneur Finance Initiative, also known as WeFi. <laughs> this facility provides access to capital, networks, and mentorship for women in developing countries. 
WeFi is the first facility to support women entrepreneurs at this scale, and we anticipate it will be able to leverage in excess of $1 billion in public and private financing. This facility also seeks to address the legal and regulatory barriers that limit opportunities for women entrepreneurs. In the last decade, USAID has promoted women's entrepreneurship through a number of programs, including providing microfinance loans to women in Afghanistan and bringing internet access to women in Nigeria and Kenya. USAID Administrator Mark Green is here with us today. Where are you, Mark? <laughs> thank you, Mark. I want to thank Mark and the entire U.S. delegation for their tireless work to improve the lives of millions, both domestically and abroad. Further, as each and every one of you can attest, this summit is yet another powerful example of a U.S. initiative that connects entrepreneurs around the world with investors who believe in your mission and will champion your success. I want to thank the U.S. business leaders who have traveled all the way to Hyderabad for this inspiring event. I also want to congratulate the more than 350 American entrepreneurs who were selected to be with us here today to represent America's brightest talent. <laughs> I think I found your section. <laughs> Thank you. At home, our administration is committed to empowering women entrepreneurs through domestic reforms. In the past 11 months, we have expanded apprenticeship programs and prioritized STEM education to ensure that women and men have more opportunities to master the skills that drive progress in the 21st century. We have dramatically reduced job-crushing regulations, which disproportionately hurt entrepreneurs and small business owners and we are laser focused on passing long overdue tax cuts. This will provide much needed relief to working families and to businesses of all sizes. Also this year, for the first time ever, the President's budget included a proposal to establish a nationwide program for paid family leave. We are committed to supporting women and men who work both inside and outside of the home. <laughs> when women work, it creates a unique multiplier effect. Women are more likely than men to hire other women, to give them access to capital, mentorship, and networks. Women are also more likely to reinvest their income back into their families and their communities. Here in India, I want to applaud Prime Minister Modi for his firm belief that the progress of humanity is incomplete without the empowerment of women. <laughs> Just consider, if India closes the labor force gender gap by half, your economy could grow by over $150 billion in the next three years. As we kick off this three-day summit, I encourage everyone here to come together, learn from each other, and find new ways to lift barriers in our society so that women are free to innovate, empowered to succeed, and able to leave our children a brighter future. As we strive for change, we must never forget that the best hope for our future is far greater than any single government policy. The source of our success is found in the spirit the drive, and the talent of our people. Here with us today from San Francisco is Dara Dots. Dara spent over a decade working in underserved communities around the world. She witnessed firsthand that many times people need very simple items, a bucket for carrying water, a splint to treat an injury, a part to fix a generator. Dara co-founded Field Ready, to provide life-saving supplies through 3D printing. Today, 
Dara's company responds to disasters all over the world and delivers humanitarian aid with cutting edge technology. Through her innovative solutions, Dara is saving lives and bringing hope to thousands of communities. Thank you, Dara. Please stand up, Dara. Raj Lakshmi Bartakar joins us from Bangalore, India. When her son began having seizures at a young age, she decided to create her own solution to better monitor his health. Stand up. <laughs> she invented a smart glove that predicts, manages, and detects different diseases and disorders using artificial intelligence. Now her company, Terra Blue, aims to make specialty healthcare accessible in even the most remote places in India. Raj Lakshmi, your courage and determination is truly remarkable. Congratulations, thank you. Also here with us today is Rayan Karmalova from Azerbaijan. Rayan, please stand up. You all won't believe this, but Rayan is just 15 years old. <laughs> but that has not stopped her from founding a company that harvests energy from rainwater. Rayan has a powerful motto light up one house at a time. Rayon, each home you light up is illuminating the world. We are inspired by your brilliance and your hard work. Thank you. These women represent the vision, the ambition, the grit of every entrepreneur here today. You are saving lives, creating jobs, and bringing hope to our communities. You are transforming our societies one business and one customer at a time. You prove to the world that we have the power to rise above the challenges of our day and to pioneer new pathways forward and to leave our mark on this moment in history. Just think about how much better the world would be if all of us, men and women, are empowered to dream big, aim high, and work together towards a more just and prosperous future. A future where mothers and fathers can work hard to build a better life for their family. Where boys and girls can go to school, discover their talents, and pursue their ambitions. And where people of all nations can live and work together in dignity and in peace. This is the future we can, will, and must build together. And this is the promise of the visionaries gathered in this room today. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ivanka Trump. May we now request the architect of the new resurgent India, the driver of the entrepreneurial spirit of India, encompassing Make in India, Startup India, and the Digital India initiatives. Ladies and gentlemen, join us in welcoming the Honorable Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi, to deliver his inaugural address. Telangana, Sri SLL Nartiman, Advisor, 
to U.S. President Ms. Ivanka Trump, Chief Minister of Telangana, Sri K. Chandrasekhar Rao, my cabinet colleagues, Sushma ji, Nirmala ji, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, we are happy to host the 2017 Global Entrepreneurship Summit in partnership with the government of the United States of America. The summit is being held in South Asia for the first time. It brings together leading investors, entrepreneurs, academicians, think tanks, and other stakeholders to propel the global entrepreneurship ecosystem. The event not only connects the Silicon Valley with Hyderabad, but also showcases the close ties between the United States of America and India. It underlines our shared commitment towards encouraging entrepreneurship and innovation. The topics picked for this year's summit include healthcare and life science, digital economy and financial technology, energy and infrastructure, and media and entertainment. These are all important issues relevant to the well-being and prosperity of mankind. The theme, Women First, Prosperity for All, makes this edition of GES stand out. In Indian mythology, Women is an incarnation of Shakti, the goddess of power. We believe women empowerment is vital to our development. Our history has references to women of remarkable talent and determination. Gargi, an ancient philosopher, around the 7th century BC, challenged the male sage to a philosophical discourse, something unheard of this in this time even. Our warrior, queens like Rani Ahalla by Holkar and Rani Lakshmi Bai, fought bravely to defend their kingdoms. Our freedom struggle too is replete with such inspirational instances. Indian women continue to lead in different walks of life. Our space programs, including the Mars Orbital Mission, have had immense contribution from women scientists. <laughs> Kalpana Chawla and Sunita Williams, both of Indian origin, have been part of U.S. space missions. Three out of four Oldest high courts in India are now headed by women judges. Our sports women have done the country proud. This very city of Hyderabad is home to Saina Nehwal, 
पी वी संधु एंड सानिया मिर्जा वी हैव ब्रॉट लॉरेज टू इंडिया इन इंडिया वी हैव प्रोवाइडेड फॉर नॉट लोस देन वन थर्ड ऑफ वुमेन रिप्रेजेंटेशन इन रूरल एंड अर्बन लोकल बॉडीज एंश्योरिंग वीमेन्स पार्टिसिपेशन इन ग्रास रूट लेवल डिसीजन मेकिंग मोर देन सिक्सटी परसेंट ऑफ वर्कर्स इन अवर एग्रीकल्चर एंड एलाइड सेक्टर्स आर वुमेन अवर मिल्क कोऑपरेटिव इन गुजरात एंड द श्री महिला गृह उद्योग लिज्जत पापड़ आर एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ हाईली सक्सेसफुल एंड ग्लोबली अक्लेम्ड वुमेन लेड कोऑपरेटिव मूवमेंट्स फ्रेंड्स हियर एट द जी एस मोर देन फिफ्टी परसेंट डेलीगेट्स आर वीमेन ओवर द नेक्स्ट टू डेज यू विल मीट मेनी वुमेन हु हैव डेड टू बी डिफरेंट इन देर ओन बॉक्स ऑफ लाइफ दे नाउ इंस्पायर अ न्यू जनरेशन ऑफ वुमेन एंटरप्रिनर्स I hope the deliberations in the summit would focus on how women entrepreneurship can be further supported. Ladies and gentlemen, India has been incubator for innovations and entrepreneurship over the ages. The ancient Indian treatises. charak sanhita introduce the world to ayurveda yoga is another ancient indian innovation the entire world now comes together to celebrate yoga day on 21st june every year many entrepreneurs are involved in promoting yoga spirituality and traditional ayurvedic products the digital world we live in today is based on the binary system the invention of zero the foundation of this binary system happened with aryabhat's work in india similarly many nuances a modern day economic policy taxation system and public finance policies are outlined in our ancient treatise arthashastra by kautilya ancient india's expertise in metallurgy and also well known our many ports and harbors and the world's oldest dockyard at lothal bear evidence to vibrant trade linkages the tales of indian voyagers traveling to foreign lands reflect the entrepreneurship character and spirit of our forefathers what are the core qualities that distinguish an entrepreneur an entrepreneur uses knowledge and skills to fulfill a motive entrepreneurs see opportunity in adversity they try to meet the the felt needs by making process more convenient and comfortable for the end user they are patient and determined swami vivekanand had said each work had to pass through three stages ridicule opposition and then acceptance those who think ahead of that time 
आर श्योर टू बी मिसअंडरस्टैंड मोस्ट एंटरप्रिनर्स वुड बी फैमिलियर विथ दिस द पावर टू थिंक डिफरेंटली एंड अहेड ऑफ द टाइम फॉर द बेटरमेंट ऑफ मैन काइंड इज बॉड सेट्स एंटरप्रिनर्स अपार्ट i see that power in india's young generation today i see 800 million potential entrepreneurs who can work towards making the world a better place the number of smartphone users in india is projected to grow to over 500 million by 2018 this offers immense potential for the growth of any venture in terms of outreach and job creation our startup india program is a comprehensive action plan to foster entrepreneurship and promote innovation it aims to minimize the regulatory burden and provide support to startups over 1200 redundant laws have been scrapped 87 rules for foreign direct investment have been eased in 21 sectors and several government processes have been taken online our government has taken several steps to improve the business environment the jump in india's ranking in the world banks ease of doing business report from 180 142 to 100 in 3 years is a result of this initiative we have improved on indicators like dealing with construction permits getting credit protecting minority investors paying taxes enforcing contracts and resolving insolvencies the process is yet not complete this is an area where we are not satisfied with 100th rank we would strive towards 50th rank we have launched the mudra scheme to provide easy finance of up to 1 billion rupees to entrepreneurs since its launch in 2015 over 90 million loans worth 4.28 trillion rupees have been sanctioned of these more than 70 million loans have been sanctioned to women entrepreneurs my government had launched the atal innovation mission we are opening tinkering lamps in more than 900 schools to promote a culture of innovation and entrepreneurship among children our mentor india initiative engages leaders to guide and mentor students through this tinkering labs in addition 19 incubation centers have been created in various universities and research institutions this will nurture innovative startup businesses to become scalable and sustainable we have created aadhar the world's largest biometric based digital data base this currently covers over 1.15 billion people 
and digitally process over 40 million transactions daily. We now digitally provide monetary benefits of various government schemes to the beneficiaries through direct benefit transfer using Aadhaar. Almost 300 million bank accounts with deposit of over 685 billion rupees, more than 10 billion dollars have been opened through the Jandhan Yojana. This brings previously unbanked section of the society into the formal financial system. Of these, 53% accounts are of women. We are steadily working towards the last, last cash economy and have launched a unified payment interface app called Beam. In less than a year, this platform is processing almost 280,000 transactions daily, having almost completed our program to connect all villages with electricity. We have now launched the Saubhagya scheme. This will provide electricity connection to all families by December 2018. We have launched a program to provide high-speed broadband internet to all rural areas by March 2019. Under our clean energy program, in just three years, we have doubled the renewables capacity from 30,000 megawatts to about 60,000 megawatts. Solar energy generation has increased over 80% in the last year. We are working on developing a national gas grid. A comprehensive national energy policy is also in the pipeline. Our Swachh Bharat mission to improve sanitation and cleanliness and the rural and urban housing missions underline our commitment towards dignity of life. Our infrastructure and connectivity programs like Sagar Mala and Bharat Mala offer entrepreneurs many business opportunities for investment. Our recent World Food India initiative help us engage with entrepreneurs in the food processing industry and agriculture waste sectors. My government understands that an environment of transparent policies and a rule of law providing a level playing field are necessary for entrepreneurship to flourish. A historic overhaul of the taxation system has been recently undertaken, bringing in the goods and services tax across the country. Our insol insolvency and bankruptcy code introduced in 2016 is a step towards ensuring timely resolution for trace ventures. We have recently improved this further, preventing willful defaulters from bidding for stress assets. Tough measures have been adopted to tackle the parallel economy, check tax evasion, and control black money. Our efforts have been recognized by Moody's recent upgrade 
of India's government bond ratings. This upgrade comes after gap of almost 14 years. India has improved from its rank from 54 in 2014 to 35 in 2016 on the World Bank Logistic Performance Index. This signifies the relative ease and efficiency with each product can be moved into and from a country. An investment-friendly environment needs to be stable from the macroeconomic perspective. We have succeeded in containing the fiscal and current account deficits and curbing inflation. Our foreign reserves have crossed $400 billion and we continue to attract large foreign capital flows. To my young entrepreneur friends from India, I would like to say each of you has something valuable to contribute towards creating a new India by 2022. You are vehicles of change and instruments of India's transformation. To my entrepreneur friends from across the globe, I would like to say, come, make in India. Invest in India. For India and for the world. I invite each one of you to become a partner in India's growth story. And once again, I assure you of our wholehearted support. I'm informed that President Trump had declared November 27, 2017, as National Entrepreneurship Month. America has also observed National Entrepreneurs Day on November 21st. This summit will certainly resonate with those themes. Let me conclude by wishing you fruitful, engaging, and rewarding deliberations at this summit. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Prime Minister of India, for your inspirational address. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have amongst us a distinguished stateswoman. May I now request our Minister of External Affairs, Srimati Shushma Swaraj, to deliver the vote of thanks. Namaskar, good evening. Honorable Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi, advisor to US President and my dear friend, Ms. Ivanka Trump, Chief Minister of Telangana, Sri K. Chandrasekhar Rao, my esteemed colleague, Srimati Nirmala Sitaraman, distinguished dignitaries and enthusiastic participants. 
I'm delighted to have this opportunity to participate in the inaugural session of the Global Entrepreneurship Summit 2017 and propose a vote of thanks on behalf of the government of India. Friends, India is a land of entrepreneurs and the U.S. is a nation that is identified with the spirit of enterprise. The relations between our two countries have developed into a strategic partnership of global significance. It is therefore eminently appropriate that our two countries have come together to co-host this Global Entrepreneurship Summit. The focus of this summit is on women entrepreneurship. Women entrepreneurs are epitome of courage and leadership. Therefore, empowerment of women is a priority for India and should be a priority for the entire world. Prime Minister Modi quoted from Swami Vivekanand. I'm again quoting Swami Vivekanand. I quote, there is no chance for the welfare of the world unless the condition of woman is improved. It is not possible for a bird to fly on only one wing. I would like to thank Prime Minister Modi for his leadership and guidance, as well as for outlining his vision to this global audience. Under his leadership, our government has embarked upon ambitious programs for empowerment of women and promotion of entrepreneurship and skill development in India. We seek to do this not only for our 1.25 billion strong population, but also for our partners in line with our mantra of Sabka Saath, Sabka Vikas, that means together we shall prosper. I would like to thank Ms. Ivanka Trump, who is a co-host of this summit. She represents the energy and spirit of an entrepreneur that characterizes the youth of today. She's a passionate advocate of education and empowerment of women and girls. Her keen interest in these issues has helped shape the agenda for this summit. I'm sure her presence will inspire women entrepreneurs from India and across the world. We appreciate the efforts of government of the United States and its leadership in promoting entrepreneurship globally. We deeply value the strong desire of President Trump to further strengthen partnership with India, which we fully share. I have no doubt that under the leadership of Prime Minister Modi and President Trump, India-US relations will scale new heights and contribute to global peace and prosperity. I would like to express our deep gratitude to the government and people of Telangana for hosting this summit. Hyderabad embodies the spirit of entrepreneurship. It is also, I'm Chinnama of Telangana. Therefore, I can say, therefore, I can very proudly say that it is also a perfect mix of traditionalism and modernism. <laughs> Friends, this summit would not have been possible without the meticulous organization by Niti Aayog. Therefore, my special thanks to Sri Rajiv Kumar, the Vice Chairman, Sri Amitabh Khan, CEO, and the entire team of Niti Aayog for successfully organizing this event. Now I would like to thank all the participants of this summit. This summit is primarily for you and will be a success if it is able to meet your expectations. We have worked hard to ensure that your experience is substantive and productive. Our special appreciation is for our foreign participants who have traveled long distances to be present here. We would like you to go back with pleasant memories and new partnerships. Last but not the least, 
I would like to extend our heartfelt thanks to all the officials and volunteers from India and the United States who have worked hard for months to make this summit happen. And the results are there for everyone to see. <clears throat> Friends, we have begun the summit with a spectacular opening. And I wish you productive deliberations over the next two days. Once again, my sincere thanks to all those who have assembled here. Thank you. Namaskar. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. With this, we conclude the inaugural session of GES 2017. Please remain seated while the Honorable Prime Minister departs. Thank you.